Hello, it's me, it's Reki, and welcome back for another military reaction with Reki. Uh, I think this might be the last of the reactions to American aircrafts. This one is something I never heard about, and I'm, I, mean, I think I'm pretty good at just the basic. This is completely new. This is XB-70 Valkyrie, uh, American Mach 3 Super Bomber Ever Built. It looks like a, I don't know what it looks like. It's huge. Without a doubt, it's huge. Before we watch the video, I want you to smack the like if you enjoy and subscribe, of course. Greatly appreciate it. And a huge thank you to my um, awesome people, the channel members and the Patreons. Thank you so much for the support. It's amazing. Thank you. And of course, we have a shout out to the Supreme Tier Donators. Bob, Buddha, Squirrel, David, Deja, Peggy, T, Max, Southern Mom, Walt, William, James, Henry, and Kimberly. Thank you so much for the amazing support. Now, let's go check it out. Look at this. I got hooked. I got hooked directly. One, two, three, four, five, six freaking engines. Let's see what this is. See this plane? It's America's Mach 3 Super Whoa. Bomber that you never heard about. Wow. The North American XB-70 Valkyrie was the largest and fastest bomber ever built by the United States. Look at this. Look at how it looks. Look at that. But the massive six-engine Mach 3 capable jet never entered production. Oh. Only one surviving prototype sits in a museum in Dayton, Ohio, even as the Boeing B-52 it was supposed to one day replace continues to soldier on. Named Valkyrie after the female battle spirits of Norse mythology, the bomber was built to penetrate Soviet air defenses in a nuclear war and deliver thermonuclear bombs on targets. The XB-70 was 196 feet long, 31 feet tall at the tail, Look and had a maximum that. gross weight of 521,000 pounds. The Valkyrie was fabricated using stainless steel honeycomb sandwich panels and titanium. It was designed to make use of a phenomenon called compression lift, achieved when the shock wave generated by the airplane flying at supersonic speeds supports part of the airplane's weight. This unique characteristic reduced drag and was one of the secrets of the XB-70's performance. I gotta say, U.S. Military News is definitely one of the best channels out there that covers uh, military equipment such as aircrafts, uh, battleships etc etc if you haven't go check him out i already subscribed did a long time ago there's a bunch of videos the idea behind the xb-70 originated in the 1950s when it was assumed even greater speeds and altitudes would enable american bombers to survive against soviet air defenses unmolested on their way to delivering their doomsday payloads at the time the only effective defense against bombers were fighters and anti-aircraft artillery even then, anti-aircraft guns were only marginally effective, and interceptors were increasingly challenged by ever-improving bomber performance. Holy crap, what? But the introduction of the first Soviet surface-to-air missiles in the late 1950s changed that picture dramatically. Suddenly, the XB-70 were much more vulnerable, and even its Mach 3 speeds could not guarantee its survival. To cope with the rising threat of Soviet missiles, the United States Air Force began to fly missions at a lower altitude where the enemy radar would have more trouble tracking its target. But at these lower altitudes, the XB-70 Valkyrie would be much less effective. So much, in fact, that it would not perform better than the B-52, the bomber it was meant to replace. Mission range and fuel economy would also suffer when flying lower. Another nail in the coffin for the XB-70 project was the development of ICBM missiles in the late 1950s. The Valkyrie was specifically designed to carry the heavy nuclear weapons, but now the ICBMs threatened the role of the aircraft. President Eisenhower was not a big believer in the Valkyrie project as he saw no real need for the aircraft. His main points against it were the same I'm as the- I'm sorry, I wanted to take a look at this. It feels so weird. What a beast, and it's not in use. The above mentioned ones. Rockets and missiles were a threat, and ICBMs were a cheaper, more effective way of doing the same thing, he said. He also pointed out that the aircraft, that was still in development, would be obsolete by the time it was ready for full-scale manufacturing, 
probably. Technology would simply have caught up to the Valkyrie. The Eisenhower administration cut the project to a single prototype. Kennedy, however, endorsed the XB-70, and it actually became part of his election campaign to do so. But at the time he became president, the XB-70 Valkyrie project had already... It looks like... Can you remember the, the, uh, the animal uh, in Ghostbusters? I don't know why, but it feels like the head. You know, the, you know what animal I'm talking about? It cost equal to almost $7 billion today. Holy. A hefty sum for a bomber. So in 1961, he canceled the project. It had become too expensive and unnecessary. Instead, Kennedy changed the XB-70 program to a research project. The Valkyrie was perfect for exploring the effects of supersonic flight and propulsion. North American Aviation completed the first prototype called AV-1 in May 1964 in Palmdale, California. A second prototype, the AV-2, quickly followed in October the same year. It's huge. A third prototype was planned but got canceled. In September 1964, the first XB-70 embarked on its first flight. The Valkyrie first went supersonic when it reached Mach 1.1 on the third test flight on October 12, 1964. It first surpassed Mach 3 on October 14, 1965, where the AV-1 reached Mach 3.02 at 70,000 feet. Wow. The AV-2 followed its sister's footsteps and became the one to hold the record for the highest speed of the two prototype aircraft. In April 1966, the AV-2 reached and maintained a top speed of Mach 3.08 for 20 minutes. A month later, the AV-2 flew at Mach 3.06 for 32 minutes and covered a distance of 3,900 kilometers or 2,400 miles in the 91 minutes flight time. Tragedy struck on June 8, 1966, when the second XB-70 prototype was destroyed in a crash after a mid-air collision with its F-104N chase plane. No. Two people were killed and one was severely injured during the accident. The loss of the second aircraft, which was much more capable than the first, was a huge setback. Testing, however, continued until February 4th, 1969. Ultimately, the first XB-70 logged 83 flights, totaling 160 hours and 16 minutes, while the second XB-70 logged 46 flights, totaling 92 hours and 22 minutes, according to NASA. The XB-70 Valkyrie last went supersonic in December 1968. Look at the baby next to it. <laughs> in February the following year, the Valkyrie AV-1 took its final flight to the National Museum of the United States Air Force near Dayton, Ohio. It's still on display there. Cool. The XB-70 Valkyrie was indeed ahead of its time. Despite a turbulent life from development to retirement, the futuristic supersonic bomber amazes with its looks, performance, and history. Looks super weird. It was weird. a product of the Cold War, where experts thought that Mach 3 speeds and higher altitudes could protect a bomber carrying nuclear weapons. But development costs and advances in technology eventually made the XB-70 Valkyrie unnecessary. Instead, the bomber was used in a research project aimed to study supersonic flight. The Valkyrie generated valuable insights about supersonic flight, insights that were later used in other military aircraft. The crash in 1966 became a darker chapter in the history of the aircraft, but the remaining Valkyrie continued its work in research and eventually went on display in 1969 in a museum in Ohio. The XB-70, while a technological wonder at the time, was the wrong plane for the wrong time. It came at a time when ballistic missiles were thought to be supplanting oh, manned really bombers. Oh, I really want to go there. Moreover, it was being developed at a time when it was increasingly apparent that high speed and high altitude were not sufficient protection against surface-to-air missiles or the next generation of Soviet fighters. Though its intended role as a strategic bomber was unsuccessful, the Valkyrie project contributed to later projects like the B-1B Lancer bomber, the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane, and other projects. More's the pity. It would likely have been the fastest bomber ever. Uh, I can't understand why it looks like that. It's so weird. Mach 3, holy crap.
Amazing footage though, amazing footage. Oh, we got a tire fire going on here. This one over here, uh, the uh, America's M142 HIMARS, is definitely on my to-do list. Thank you so much to US Military News for producing yet another amazing video. Thank you so much. I really, really enjoy those. Uh, if you did enjoy what I just did, smack the like and, of course, hit that subscribe. And if you want to join and become one of the awesome people, check out my Patreon. Link is in the comment section. Or click join become a member. I am Ricky, and uh, you, stay safe.